Whatever your situation is, tonight's the night to just make a faith connection. And this is what you have to say. If God, you're doing it, I'll take it. Some of you guys need some wisdom in the situation you're dealing with. You need a financial breakthrough or maybe a healing tonight. So get ready to receive. Pastor Theo's coming from South Africa. He actually has a church in Texas as well. And his wonderful wife, Bev, is here. We love Beverly. We love her. Like when I saw she came, I go, oh, man, what a great surprise. She's a wonderful woman of God. But we're ready right now in this moment not only to receive a word that's going to build our faith, many of you are going to receive healing in your bodies today. It's going to be a healing moment. And then, and then once you receive it, and I want every one of us to receive this because God wants to move through a powerful church. The, the, the signs and wonders will follow those that believe. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And this is what he's saying. I put my spirit in you to manifest my power in this world. I just didn't give it so you could live a life. I gave it so you could give some life. Come on, give some hope. And all we're going to do right now is receive everything God has for us. And we're no longer going to be regular Christians. We're going to be supernatural Christians. And if we find someone sick, we're going to visit them, lay hands on them, and we're going to trust that Jesus is going to heal them. Come on, through the faith and the gift that God has given us tonight. So we, let's give Pastor Theo a way we're allowed to reach welcome. Let him know you're ready to receive from God. We're so excited, Pastor Theo. Cancer. There's, um, there's a spirit of cancer here tonight. All those who have cancer, stand up quickly. Hi, I'm a new creator. I'm 21 years old and I've been here a year and a half now. Someone particularly is a demon, a spirit of cancer in the room. Where are you? Come down here. Yeah. Pastor Theo was doing his healing so many and he called out for cancer. So I didn't want to go up at all. Come on down here. Yeah. Is it you? Where's the cancer? Your stomach? You have cancer in your stomach, in your uterus. I want you to take a picture of this lady and I want you to get her name and address. I want you to come back testify next week. And when you go to see the doctor, you're going to be healed. Right? You ready? What's your name? Monique. Monique, by the Spirit of God and the authority of Christ, I command that cancer to die in your body. I command that Spirit to go from you in the name of Jesus. Now, you fellow demon, you shall not attach yourself to anybody in this building. You leave this property in the name of Jesus. Like fire, I felt literally something going down my body, like this extremely heat wave going up and down my body. And I thought of it as maybe it's just me being shy, blushing my bum off in front of everyone. But no, it wasn't. It was healing. that was the field prayed for me I got healed and to me in my head it was I don't think God will do it for me I know he's a good God and he would do it for everyone else but I thought low of myself in the sense I'm not worthy and then I went to the doctor yesterday and I found out that I'm healed completely Thank you, Pastor Fia, and your wonderful wife. You guys are doing a very, very good work for God, and if you didn't listen to the voice of God, I wouldn't be healed today. Thank you very much. Die in your body. I command that spirit of God from you in the name of Jesus. Oh, it's just happy. Praise the Lord, family of God. I don't think I'm going to play any more videos, I don't know. <laughs> well, it's so wonderful to be here. What a great church we have here. 
The Way World Outreach, wow. What a great vision in your name too. And Pastor Marco and Pastor Lisa, what great pastors you have. So it's a joy to meet them. They, uh, Pastor Marco came to our church in South Africa in 2019. And um, are we okay with this microphone? Did I mess something up? Is it okay? One, two. Sounds like it's feeding back. But anyway, um, I've enjoyed being here so far. What a great pleasure it is, a joy it is to be here with you all. Such a great ministry. Wow, you guys are on fire for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. And what a great vision you have. What a great vision. And I'm sure you're all excited about it. You're going to get behind it with your finances and make it happen. Amen. Praise God. Well, before we get started, I've got some books back there. I brought some with me, and I want to um, just bless you. How many of you would like a book here? This one is, uh, Who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? Who wants this book? All right, this one is, Jesus brought healing for all. Jesus brought healing for all. <laughs> this one is called the price of a decision the price of a decision you know when I put this tie on tonight I didn't have to pray about what tie to put on but among our everyday decisions are some that are final and irreversible and we choose and the moment passes and we absolutely seal our destiny so the plan and purpose of God can be missed totally by a wrong choice. And in this book, I go from Genesis through the ages in the Bible, tracing choices people made. It's a phenomenal history book on choices. And uh, it'll stop you in your tracks and make you think about praying before you make important decisions. Because among your everyday choices are some that you can't change once you've made them. Who wants this book? All right. And then after that, you've got to know how to recognize the voice of God. So this book, How to Recognize the Voice of God, I've heard God speak to me about 30 times audibly, like you hearing me now. And, um, and God has spoken to me by the leading of the Holy Ghost and all the time and I've shared dozens and dozens of stories in here of how to hear God's voice and then what happened and then the story unfolds this book is going to help you recognize God's voice and that you need to know once you read price of a decision you want this book after that are you ready don't get hurt now go back there <laughs> And then, once you know, once you heard that book, once you heard that book, stay there, brother, see if you can catch. So once you've read, once you read those books, you need to know, if God's called you, if God has called you, you believe God has a plan for your life, that is, right? Then you need to know what it is, and you need to take it. You know, Caleb said to Joshua, give me this mountain. And he went and took it at 85, right? This book is called Give Me This Mountain. It's about the challenges we've had in, in our ministry and how we trusted God to overcome them. It's a supernatural story, but I'll encourage you. All right. Now, the blood covenant, um, the blood covenant, I taught this first in 1982. Bob Tilton back in Dallas and years ago had a phenomenal ministry and uh, I still, I'm still in contact with him, a wonderful man. He made some wrong choices but a wonderful man of God. And we were house friends, Bob and Marty and Bev and myself. And, and he had a Bible school that would reach into Canada and all over America. And um, he had 2,000 Bible schools live. 
and he said to me, I want you to teach your, your message, because I had a message on the covenant, and I want you to teach this message, the blood covenant, to all those students. So I did. But since then, I've thought it several times. And then finally, about five years ago, I decided to, rewrite, to write a book. And I wrote this book, but I wrote it in six months. I rewrote it by hand six months, six times over, once per month, until I got it right. So this book, The Blood Covenant, is packed full of revelation on the covenant you have with God. You can't miss, you've got to have this. You ready? <laughs> This book, How to Pray. Now, who has, who has a great, who has a real intercessory ministry? You are an intercessor. Now, who spends more than two hours a day praying in the Holy Ghost? Don't lie now. Don't lie now. Who spends more than two hours a day praying in the Holy Ghost? You do? Okay. <laughs> now, this one, the power of positive words, the power of positive words, all right, say this, God cannot do for me, say this, God cannot do for me more than my words of faith allow him to do. Again, God cannot do for me. More, more than my words of faith, words of faith allow him to do. do. Say so this, if I don't like what I have and what I am, my problem is one inch below my nose. <laughs> Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Who wants this book? All right. This is the last one I'm giving away. This one's called, this is now, this book is called A Day Devotional, mountain, how, to, how to Build Mountain Moving Faith, Faith for Today. Every day there's a faith lesson, a teaching on how, on faith. And there's 300 plus lessons in here for each day. And each one of these lessons took me about two to four hours to pray over and write and prepare. So there's hundreds of hours of study and prayer in this. Each lesson is different and faith building message for each day. If you need faith, who wants this? Faith for today. All right. <laughs> faith for today. Let's pray, family. Dear Father in heaven, we bow before you now. We thank you for the word of God. As we come to teach in this great church with these great pastors, I thank you for your anointing upon my mind that I might grasp the revelation that will rise in abundance from my heart within. Thank you for supernatural recall of the scripture. And I believe that your word will flow from my mouth smoothly, accurately, clearly, without hindrance from anything, carried by your anointing, your power, and your love to each person's mind, Bring understanding, removing confusion, that you will enter every heart, bringing faith, dispelling every fear, and will be careful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory for all that's revealed and accomplished through your word and by your spirit here today. In Jesus' name, and all those who love the Lord said, Amen. Amen. You, may be seated. you may be seated. All right, so tonight, we're going to discuss the subject of divine healing. If you've got a notepad, I encourage you to take notes. Better still, if you've got a Bible, write in your Bible. Write in your Bible. If you can't write in your Bible, throw it away. Go buy a good one. Say this, clean Bible. Clean. You're going to speak when I ask you, folks. <laughs> Say this, clean Bible. Clean Bible. Dirty Christian. Dirty, Dirty Bible. Dirty Bible. Clean, clean Christian. Okay. Open your Bible to Exodus 15, Genesis, Exodus chapter 15, and we're looking at verse 26. So here God comes to Israel, and he introduced himself to Israel, okay? And he says, I'm going to give you my name. This is who I am, all right? And he says, 
I am the Lord who heals you. Now, in the original Hebrew, I am Jehovah Rapha. Now, Jehovah Rapha in Hebrew, translated in English is, I am the Lord who heals you. So God said, this is who I am. This is my name. I am the Lord who heals you. So now, if God didn't heal, he'd have to change his name. Oh. Say that if God did not heal, he'd have to change his name. Because he's not who he says he is. Now, this is one of God's very own covenant names. And God does not bring healing to humanity without, uh, sorry, if God did not bring healing to humanity, he would have to change his name. Now, God promised to bring healing to humanity over in Exodus 23, verse 25. If you want to go there, Genesis, Exodus, you're still in Exodus. God said, I will take sickness away from the midst of you. I will take it away. How did he do that? God took sickness away by sending Jesus Christ to the earth to absorb all sickness. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, that he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So Christ on the cross became the sum total of all sin. We got that? Say so that Christ became the sum total of all sin, past, present, future. On the cross, Christ was sin. He became sin, all right? But he also became sickness. Isaiah 53, verse 10, God made him sickness. He became all sickness on the cross. He took all sickness and became sickness. He accepted it, he bore it, he swallowed up and died with it. He took the world's sickness out of the world. He bore it. So any sickness that's floating around is not yours, it's from the devil. Christ took yours. You got that? Christ died with yours. Whatever sickness is in this room is from Satan. Right? Acts 10, 38. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Now, moving along, Matthew 8, verse 16, please. Matthew 8, verse 16. Matthew writes, When the evening had come, they brought to Jesus many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick. Healed all who were sick. That it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Christ himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. So somebody was trying to tell me that Isaiah was saying, when Christ took our sicknesses, he's talking about spiritual things and not physical things. But Matthew quotes Isaiah to prove that what Jesus was doing was what Isaiah spoke about. So Matthew said, Christ, uh, uh, Isaiah was telling us that the healing that Christ took, the sickness that Christ took was for our physical well-being. He took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses right here in Matthew 8, 16. Now someone also tried to tell me it was only for those who were there. He took their sicknesses who were there at that time, but not for today. Well, then it would have written like this. He took their sicknesses and bore their pains. But it didn't. It said he bore ours. Ours. Amen? Say he bore mine. He bore ours. Okay. The Apostle Peter also confirms this in 1 Peter 2 verse 24. 1 Peter 2 24. He says, by whose stripes you were healed. By whose stripes you were healed. So you see, Isaiah says were, Peter says were, Matthew says Jesus bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. So in each case it were, as were, past tense. Both Matthew, Peter, and Isaiah all said were. Now, 
Both Matthew and Peter are quoting from Isaiah 53, explaining that Jesus fulfilled that prophecy. Thousands upon thousands of people came to Jesus for healing, and there's no record in the Bible of Jesus turning anybody away. All who desired healing from Jesus received. Not one was turned away. Not one person that came, Jesus did not say to anybody, this is not from God. I mean, this is, this is, this is, God doesn't want you to be healed. This is, whatever you've got, this suffering is from God. He wants you to suffer because he's molding you, making you, deepening your piety, whatever the case might be. That he did not say that to anybody, right? He healed everybody that came. Now, I wonder how many of those that came were perfect Christians. Not one. I wonder how many of those that came deserved to be healed. Not one. Not one. And everyone was healed. Everyone was healed. Not one deserved it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Matthew 4, 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to Jesus all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases, torments, and those who were demon-possessed, and those who had epilepsy and paralytics, and he healed them. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee, from Decapolis, from Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. Now go to Luke 6, 17. Luke 6, 17. And Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases, as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch Jesus. For power went out from him and healed them all. Say so that power went out from him and healed them all. And some of them begged him if they could just touch his clothes. Because the power was in his clothes as well. It spilled out of his body into his clothes. And as many as touched him, the power flowed into them and healed them. Right? Now the Lord Jesus teaches his disciples how to use their faith. In Luke 17, 5. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. How many of you would like to have more faith? All right, well, Jesus is going to give us a faith lesson here. Watch this. The apostles said to Jesus, increase our faith. He has the faith lesson, Luke 17, 6. The Lord Jesus said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say. Now, we took several trips to Israel, and we went by one mustard seed tree, mustard tree. It's quite a large tree, probably up as high as that big yellow light up there. And, uh, and the mustard seeds on that tree were so small, the size of a pinhead. And, but Jesus says, if you have faith like a mustard seed, okay, you can say, to this mulberry tree. You can speak to the tree. You heard that song, I Speak to the Trees? That's where it came from, way back then. I'm only kidding, right? That's a joke. Don't go tell me. You know, somebody, they, sometimes I think I'm telling the truth when I say things like that. I'm not. I'm just kidding. You have to know me. Like when people get quiet in our church, they say it's getting awfully quiet in this Presbyterian church. So somebody came to me off the service and said, I didn't know we were a Presbyterian church. I said, no, bless their hearts, we're not. They're way too quiet for us. Okay. Anyhow, so sometimes I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just joking. All right, so if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say this marble tree, we pull up by the roots and we plow it in the sea and it would obey you. So say this, if I have faith, I can say. If I don't have faith, I'm not going to say. All right, you got that? Now watch this. If I have faith, I can say. 
Mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. The tree will obey you. Not God, you. You see that? The tree will obey you. So that Jesus said, Jesus said, if I have faith, I can speak. And my words will come to pass if I believe what I say. See, Mark eleven twenty three. 23, Jesus said while staying on the Mount of Olives, he said while looking over the city of Jerusalem, he said, whosoever should say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things he says shall come to pass, he will have whatever he says. Right? He will have whatever he says. If he believes in his heart, what he said will come to pass. He'll have whatever he said. Whatever he said. Right? If he believes in his heart, what he said with his mouth, it'll come to pass. Say this, if I believe in my words, they will come to pass. Do you believe in your words? You do? So we have to be careful what we say. Watch our words. If you want to have faith in your words, you can't tell lies because you'll deceive your heart. Your heart will know. You can't tell lies. And you can't speak irresponsibly. We have to start thinking before we speak. We have to. We have to. Because every idle word will be judged for. Every idle word. Now, what does that mean? Jesus said, you'll be judged for every idle word. Something that's idle is non-productive. In other words, an idle word is a word that doesn't have faith in it. Okay? Because that which is not a faith is a sin, the Bible said, right? So every idle word is a word without faith. Do you believe the word or not? That's the bottom line. That's an idle word. So if we speak irresponsibly, joking, fool around all the time, we're not believing in those words. Right? Think before we speak. If we want to have faith mountain-moving faith in our lives, we've got to start being responsible about how we speak. Because you've got to have faith in your words. Hello? Is this helping anybody? Okay, good. <laughs> Just checking. So, we've got to have faith in our words, right? You see, the Bible says also in Numbers 14.28, Remember when Israel came to Canaan, they sent out the 10 spies, the 12 spies, 10 came back with the evil report saying, we can't conquer the land, there's giants there. Two, Joshua and Caleb said, yes, we can, God's on our side. Remember that story, right? So 10 of those spies said, why don't we go back into the wilderness and just die there? Or go back to Egypt and die there? Joshua and Caleb said, no, God's on our side, we can conquer it. And God said this, Numbers 14, 28. Moses, tell them, as surely as I live, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I'll do unto you. Just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I'll do unto you. So what happened? The ten spies that said we should die in the desert, they all went back. Three million of them, they all died except the children. They came back and conquered Canaan, but they died there. Josh and Caleb said we can go in. Here's the thing. They had the faith to take Canaan, but they couldn't go without Israel. See, sometimes God will judge a nation, he'll judge an individual, he'll judge a family. Things concerning nations, you've got to intercede that the majority will come with you and believe God with you. Like a church, when a church believes God together, nothing will stop it. That's why you're going to, you're going to have that building, you're going to have it. won't be a problem. You'll see. So we've got to come together and believe God together. As I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken my hearing, so I'll do unto you. Say that God is waiting to hear what I'm going to say. We were in South Africa many years ago. Well, we go, go a lot to South because we still run the church in Janesburg. But anyway, um, so 
our daughter Candace was changing a little boy when he was about eight months old on a table four foot high. And she held him like this and she went back to get something, a diaper or something. And he just flipped and rolled off the table before she could catch him, fell on his head, cracked his skull on the concrete floor. And they rushed him to hospital, x-rayed him. Yes, his brain was bleeding and the skull was cracked. Um, and then they called us, it was like two o'clock in the morning. Possibly picked up the phone in the house. We were staying in Jasper at the time in our house there. And um, she said, um, she, I could see she was white as a ghost. She just stood there like this, the phone, listened for about five minutes. And um, the ambulance took this child to another hospital because they couldn't help the child. They said, there's nothing we can do for this child. So she held the phone. She said, Troy, it was Troy, right? He was eight months old. Needs a miracle. He fell off the table, cracked his skull. Doctors, the hospital said they can't help him. They took him to another hospital. So she gave me the phone. Candace is on the other side. Her family, uh, uh, Travis, her husband's family are there. Everybody's there in the hospital. So I got the phone. I said, Lord, what now? And just like that, the Spirit of God said to me, Numbers 14, 28. As I live, says, Lord, just as you spoke in my hearing, so I'll do unto you. And I said, Lord, why that verse? And God said to me, I'm waiting to hear what you are going to say. I'm waiting to hear what you are going to say. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, this child is healed by the power of God. And, and I said that, and um, I said to all those people who were there, I said, now, this is a confession. And I gave them the exact confession. I said, do not change it. Troy is healed. He's, he's perfectly fine. They rushed him to the next hospital, x-rayed him, and they could find no problem with him. He's perfectly fine. Now, but we put the phone down. We went to sleep. We woke up the next day. Well, we didn't know the answer until later because the tests were running. We went to church. We were having a celebration. We just preached. Didn't tell anybody anything. Didn't tell anybody anything. Didn't phone them. Didn't ask them what the news was. Didn't ask them. I didn't phone, we didn't phone Candace and ask her what's going on, what the news is. It was the next day when the news came out from the hospital, I couldn't find the problem. But we never bothered to tell anybody about this, and we never asked Candace, our daughter, what the news was. She came back to us. You say, why not? Because we really had the answer. We knew before the doctors knew. Why would we want to ask the doctor when we already knew they were trying to find out what we know? We already had the answer. God said, I'm waiting to hear what you say. Say that. God is waiting to hear what I'm going to say. So he can act. God cannot do for more for me. God cannot do more for me than my words of faith allow him to do. I must believe in my words. Amen. All right, so now, here is, this is the last scripture I'd like you to see. Go to Mark, Mark chapter 5 as we close. Mark 5. 25. This is a great example of what we're talking about. Now, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I might touch his clothes, I shall be made well. If I can just touch his clothes. Because remember, she had been hearing now that power flowed out of his clothes, right? 
If only my touch is closed. Now, why don't you say if only? Well, because she was considered to be like a leper. If she, if she was discovered out in public, they would have stoned her to death. And now she is concerned that she's going to have to go through the crowd to get to Jesus. And she doesn't know if she's going to make it. But if she does, she says, if only I can touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Not about what would happen if she got there. The doubt was if she could get there. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. She felt. What does that mean? She, power must have flown into her. She must have felt the power flow into her body. You see, you can't see electricity. But if you put your finger in a plug, you can feel it. Now, don't try that. Just take my word for it. I've done that stupid uh, thing myself, and I felt it. So you don't just believe me, it works. So there's power everywhere. When somebody came in here today, and they turned on the switch, the lights came on. The power was waiting, because Pastor Mark, Pastor Marco paid the electricity bill. So the power was waiting at the switch, right? So when they turned it on, the lights came on, right? Now, there's power everywhere, everywhere. God is everywhere, so God's power is everywhere. Correct? So when you turn on the switch, God's power flows, right? Say this, my words of faith, turn on the switch. Amen? All right. Now say this, thank you means I've accepted the free gift. And that's the switch. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Now then, <clears throat> immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? He turned around. That means he's facing this way. She comes behind him, touches the hem of his cloak. She feels the power. He feels the drain, the surge of power. He turns around and says, who touched my clothes? He didn't feel a physical touch. He didn't feel a physical touch. He knew somebody touched his clothes because power flowed out, right? He felt the power flow. So you can feel the power. You can feel it. It's real. Now, but his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you, and you say, who touched me? So his disciples said, Lord, how can we know who touched you? Everybody's touching you. Some are touching you by accident. Some are touching you by curiosity. If it is bumping into you, how will we know who touched you, Lord? It seems like, Lord, you're giving us an impossible question here to answer. Right? But somebody touched him with faith. That's different. He felt the touch of faith. Right? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before Jesus and told him the whole story. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Now, Jesus could have said, my faith healed you. But Jesus said, your faith healed you. Well, obviously, Jesus knew nothing about it, right? He knew nothing about it. It wasn't his faith. It was her faith, right? So... I mean, Jesus could have turned around and said to her, now, daughter, that's not good. You didn't ask me. You have no manners. Didn't your mother teach you? You ask. You don't just take. Naughty, naughty, naughty. He could have said that to her, right? But he didn't. He commended her. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace, right? So remember this. You don't have to beg for healing. You don't have to beg for healing. She didn't beg for healing. You can just take it, right? You can just take it. Just take it because it's already ours. You see, Jesus healed everybody that came to him on the earth when he was here. He spent hours every day praying for thousands of people one at a time. Every day for three and a half years. He spent more time praying for people 
than doing anything else. That proves it's important to God, right? Then, why did he do that? Because when he died on the cross, he's going to die, when he died on the cross, he brought healing for the human race, past, present, and future. And if Jesus turned anybody away, listen carefully, if Jesus turned anybody away, we could look back and say, well, we're not sure if the cross brought healing for everybody. Maybe not for everybody, but for some, because Jesus turned some away. Then we wouldn't have prayed in faith. We'd have prayed in doubt, Lord, if it be your will. But now we know it is his will. You don't have to pray if it is his will. So say this with me. Jesus healed everybody. He had to because it belonged to them. He bought it for them all on the cross. So Jesus wants all of us to walk in health as well because if that was good for them before Calvary, it sure is good for us after they paid the price at Calvary. Amen. So remember this. God's waiting to hear what you're going to say. You know, in Joshua chapter 10, the children of Israel were having a war against the Amalekites. And the sun was setting. And Joshua knew if the sun set, because they had the upper hand in the war, if the sun set, that the next day, the night, and the Amalekites would regroup and they'd come back strong again the next day and they'd start all over again, getting the victory. And so he knew they were wrapping this up now. The sun needs to stay up in the sky just a little bit longer so they can wrap this up and conquer the Amalekites. And so Joshua turns to the sun and he says, sun, stand still over Gibeon and moon in the valley of Ajalon. Stand still. Now, I read a book some time ago about a man who worked for NASA, a scientist, who wrote this book, and I've forgotten his name. He wrote this book saying that the, the space probes didn't work because they found a missing day in history and they couldn't figure it out until they read that in the Bible and they read where Isaiah turned the sundial back one hour for King Hezekiah. So they put that about a whole day in Joshua 10 with the one hour in Isaiah and they found the missing day made the adjustments and everything worked right in space. Now, he wrote this book and at the end of the book he said, he gave us all the facts. I mean, you could not disprove it because it was all in the book. And then, but he said, if you take this to NASA, they will, disprove, they will refute it. They fired him after he wrote the book. But when you read the book, you know it's true. So here, and of course it's in the Bible. But this is the thing that amazes me. The Bible says in Joshua 10 that there's never been a day like that before that where God heeded the voice of a man and stopped the sun and the moon in the sky for about 23 hours for Joshua to win that battle. He didn't warn God, didn't prepare God. God didn't turn to Jesus and say, you know what, we're not ready for this. <laughs> Hang on, ask him to hold it there a second. Let's get our ducks in a row. No, just stop the sun and the sky. Well, actually, the earth stopped turning. You know that. And that's turning a whole day, a thousand miles an hour, and no one even knew. They kept fighting. But if you stop at a thousand miles an hour, you're going to be like that bug that goes through the windscreen. You know what went through the, you know the last thing that went through the bug's mind when it hit the windscreen? The last thing that went through its mind was its rear end. The last thing that went through the bug's mind was its, was its rear end when it hit the windscreen. <laughs> no one died when the earth stopped. No one even knew about it. Right? Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Say this. God's waiting to hear what I'm going to say next. So, raise your right hand and say, Tonight, I will receive from God what I came for. 
in the name of Jesus, when I'm prayed for, I'll receive it. It's my free gift. God is going to give it to me without a problem. I'm not trying to earn this. Like a Christmas gift, I accept it because it was paid for 2,000 years ago. Praise God for His grace, for His mercy, and all we are, all we are, we are by the grace of God, by the grace of God. It's the truth, brother and sister. All we are, we are by the grace of God. Amen? All right, so now, you see that video you saw there? I've got about 80 videos like that. I sent quite a few over to, I don't know if you saw them, um, Boss Marco. And uh, I don't know if we've got time to show any more. I think we're probably out of time. Do we have time for one video? We do? Okay. Um, who's, do they, can they hear me back there? Can they control that and just get one video out? One of the ones I sent over. Um, the child coxswain. Um, what about the one, um, do you have the one where the lady had the, the, the uh, do you have the one where the lady had the four-inch growth in her body? Okay. Do you have that one? Yeah, I think so. Do you have a list of it? Do you have the list of them there? Do you have a list of the videos? Mm -hmm. Can I have a look at that? Yeah. I'll choose one. You got the list, yeah? Oh, there you go. Okay. All right, what about showing... Can you, do you have that one? The first one? That lady. No. I can't see Natasha Bush. I don't think we have You don't have that one. Which ones do you have loaded? I have the car accident, cancer in the womb. I have Juanique again, and then John, eight strokes, two heart attacks. Oh, uh, cancer in the womb. Oh, uh, cancer in the womb? Cancer in the womb? Show that one. Cancer in the womb. Okay. One more. So I just wanted you to see how readily God heals while they're loading that. You ready? Already. Let it roll. Hi, my name is Aresta. I'm 27 years old. Uh, last year, January, when I went to the doctors, I was diagnosed with cancer in my womb. I got treated for it and eventually I got rehabilitized, but I, I was stuck with severe pain after that and I was on medication. For me it was a severe thing to think about because I know that I will never have children again. I won't be able to live a normal life and that I eventually have to go for operation and I have to be on medication full time again. With celebrations 2016 I came with an expectation that I will get healed. I sense cancer just been healed in the womb. Is that right in the womb? Is there somebody like that here? Dr. Thieu, when he called out, there's a woman that's got womb cancer. I was actually standing in the crowd when I sat down. The Holy Spirit just lifted me up and pulled me out of the crowd and made me walk forward. And this made me realize that, that God has a plan for me. Run down here, run down here, run down here. Spirit Lord is only healing you. There it is. You see, you prayed, ask God to touch you tonight. Did you not? <laughs> you are healed. <laughs> and for that moment after Dr. Thieu prayed for me, when I was under the Holy Spirit, I, I had a divine <laughs> meeting with Jesus where I was in this bright light and I could feel my whole body healing. I can feel everything that that was hurt, that was ill. I could just feel it heal and, and just move out of my body and just go away. And I got healed. And I'm blessed to say today, after all my doctor's meetings and appointments, that I'm clean. And it's never coming back. I am healed in Jesus' name.
God told me to tell you, you're healed. So after being healed um, and going for my checkups, um, my biggest fear always was I'll never have children again. I won't be able to get pregnant again. I found out that I'm pregnant, so I've got a double portion of blessing. Not only being healed from cancer, but I'm also six weeks pregnant currently, and I am happy. I just want to thank God for my healing, and that I am able to testify today that I am healed and that I am blessed. And I just want to thank Dr. Thieu for listening to God's voice, so that he was able to call me out and to know that God wanted me healed and that I was sitting with an expectation. And today I can live out my life's testimony to know that God is alive and that He still heals. You are healed. All right, let's give the Lord some praise in the house. There we go. Okay, thank you. So, remember this, family. Um, I can't heal anybody. I'm not the healer at all. I can't heal anybody, right? It's all Jesus. It's all Jesus. The Holy Spirit. He's the healer. Amen? He's the healer. And we're two or three gathered together. There he is. He's here right now. The same Jesus. Same healer. All right. How many of you need back surgery? Change that. How many of you have had back surgery and it hasn't worked? You've had back surgery, it hasn't worked. Stand up. And you're in terrible pain right now. You're in terrible pain right now. Stand up quickly. You've had back surgery, it didn't work. Now, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 is being the worst pain you've, you can imagine. 0 being no pain or hardly any pain. What's the number of your pain? One to ten. Eight. Six. Eight. Can I see anybody else standing anywhere? Wave at me. Wave at me. I can't see them back. Okay. What's what's the level of pain? Seven. Do I have a nine? Do I have a nine? Do I have a ten? Nines and tens. Come down here. And bring them down here, nines and tens. Now, can I get a camera on the platform here? Right on the platform. And can I have two chairs and a white cloth? Do you have a white cloth? Oh, that's a little sudden to spring that on you. Do I have a white tablecloth? Can she come up on the platform? Bring whoever's got that pain, come up here quickly. Bring up that chair as well. Bring that chair up on the platform. Do I have a white cloth? Can everybody find a white tablecloth or something? Just two chairs, that's fine. We can take the pulpit away. Bring the, bring the lady up on the platform. I need, no, white, white. Like this, this color, my shirt. A white cloth. Take a seat over there and take the pulpit away. So, I know one at a time, I'm going to sit in that chair. I'm going to sit in this chair. You can stand right here. Thank you. Okay. I'm waiting. I need a white cloth before I can start. Very important. Something white, a tablecloth or something white I can put on the floor. You've got to have that before I can start. And then you can bring your camera and you put it right there because I'm going to hold her legs out. You can put that camera right here and shoot down. Come stand that side. I should. Something white. 
perfect. Now, good job. Good job. You can stand that side. Stand that side. Stand here, lady. Stand there. Put that down there on the floor. No, on the floor. On the ground. Okay. Perfect. All right. Now we're in business. You can put my chair a bit closer. Up here. On there. Put my chair on there. Thank you. All right. Can you watch this? Now, where's that camera? Can you throw that, whatever you're going to film now, can you throw it up on the screens? Can you throw it live on the screens? So bring the camera here where my hand is. Okay? Looking down, not that way down. So give me your legs. So why am I going to do this? Give me your legs. I'm going to measure her legs because, because, tell us what happened. Do I have a microphone for the lady? What happened to you? Why did you get this problem in the first place? Um, I was uh, diagnosed with scoliosis when I was in sixth grade. Okay. And I had two major back surgeries before I was a freshman in high school. Mm -hmm. 2012 ish, I had my rods removed, which dropped my shoulder. Okay, so you have sugar problem too? Yeah. Okay. I have the S, scoliosis. Okay. So, I, I just measured your legs quickly. One is about one and a half inches shorter than the other leg. Did you know that? Yes. So when the one leg is one and a half inches shorter than the other leg, that can cause a, a problem in the spine through all those years, and that can eventually cause a need for surgery. Arthritis and all sorts of things can come in, come into the spine of yours, you see, right? Yeah. Okay. So and you've had this problem for years, obviously. So I want you to come down here and shoot that camera is going to have to be right where my hand is, facing down. No, that's not right. That's not good. You have to take it off there. Okay. Otherwise, this won't work. Sorry, guys. Perfect. Bring it over. Bring it over. More over. Right central. Facing perfect. That's facing there. That needs to go there. Perfect. Okay. Now. Hold it like that. Now give me your legs. Good job, guys. Now pull your pants up, right? Now, look at that. The one leg is sticking out past the other. Can you see that on the screens? Put your hand up if you can see that. Now, when you say thank you, Jesus, don't do it now. When you say thank you, Jesus, your short leg is going to grow out. You'll feel the power of God lengthen your bone, your skin, your muscles. You feel the power of God do that. You feel the power of God then go right up into your back. You feel your back moving. Your spine will move. Jesus is going to do surgery in your whole back. Straighten out, fix you. Right now. You ready? You'll feel it like a warm heat. Warm heat. A warm heat will go through your body. You ready to say thank you, Jesus? Now watch your legs. Don't take your foot. Don't take your eyes off your legs. You got it? Keep your eyes on your legs. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, look at me. Look at me. Now, that power, that same power is going up your back right now. There it goes. The power is going up your back right now. There it goes. You feel that power on your back? Your back's moving right now. Right? You feel that? Your back is moving. God's doing a miracle on your back right now. There it is. It's all done. You are completely straight and healed. Pain is gone. Stand up. Touch your toes. Stand up. Touch your toes. Right there. Touch your toes. Here we are. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All glory to God.
<laughs> oh, oh, glory to God. Praise God. All right. Who's next? Did you see that? Straighten that chair, somebody. It's not straight. The chair comes this way a bit more. More straight. Okay. Can I have your legs? Pull your pants up, please. Pull your pants up. Give me your legs. Okay. Put that camera right again. Can you see the one leg sticking out past the other? Can you see that? Put your hands up if you can see that. Is that clear enough on the screen? All right, now look at me. What's your name? Ivy. What happened to you? I fell off a bridge and um, compressed my discs. Discs? Yes. Now you can and see. My left knee. My left knee you can see that can cause a problem in your back, right? Can you realize that? Mm -hmm. Can you see one leg is longer than the yes. other? Did you know it was like that? No. It's about an inch and a half there. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus is going to lengthen the skin, the bone, the muscle. Now, you must keep your eyes open. You must keep your eyes open. Okay. And I want you to watch this leg grow. Watch the leg. Don't close your eyes. Now, say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, watch. Here it comes. Was your, was your leg, uh, was your shoe on properly? Was your shoe on properly? It was. Okay. All right. Now, that same power is going up your back. Sit down. Do you speak English? Yes. Just sit down. Relax. That power is going up your back. Relax. Pain's leaving. It's gone. Get up. Touch your toes. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Microphone. What is your name, lady? Jesse. Jesse. Sit down, straighten that chair, Jesse. So, Jesse, what happened to you? Oh, it didn't. <laughs> my back, I found out my back is a mess. That's what the doctor said. He said it's a mess because he said, had so many children. So you had surgeries. Excuse me? Yeah, you had surgery. You had an operation. I didn't have no operation. You didn't have any operation. No. Did you say you need to? Excuse me? Did the doctor say you need to have surgery? He said I can't because I have high blood pressure. Oh, okay. Well, well, you shouldn't have been on the platform, but give me your legs anyway. All right. So now, is that sore? Okay. Your knees. Okay. So your one leg is a little longer than the other. About half an inch. Can you hear me okay? Look at your legs. One is a little longer than the other. Can you see I'm pushing both legs? Can you see that? All right. Now, did you know it was like that? No. Well, when you say thank you, Jesus, he's going to lengthen that short leg. All right? You ready? Watch your leg now. Watch your foot. Keep your eye on it. Now say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right? Come on. I had nothing to do with it. She says, how'd you do that? I didn't do it. Okay, now, just sit back, relax. Now, you're going to feel a warm heat go up your back. There it goes. It's getting hot. God's healing that spine. He's doing surgery on your back right now. Just stay there. Jesus is doing surgery on your spine right now, healing you. There it is. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now all the pain is gone. You are healed. You can get up and walk properly. Don't hobble. Walk properly. You've got to push me in that chair. Off you go. Walk nicely now. Praise you.
Come here. I want you to push me in your chair. Come behind me. Turn the brake off of this thing. How do I turn the brake off? Okay, that's okay, but you can push me fine. How do I steer this thing? Don't push me off the platform, but let's go. Push me. Just watch out where you're going with this thing. I just don't want to have any accidents now. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. You won't need that anymore, right? Tell us what Jesus did for you. Thank you. What did Jesus you, do for Jesus. you? Excuse me? What did he do for you tonight? Makes me happy. <laughs> I mean, I can move. So, are you glad that Jesus healed you? A little on the side. side move like this. Do that. I so, know. Good? Okay. Oh my gosh. Thank you. I All couldn't right. do that before. Okay. Honest. Praise the Lord. She's going to go home and just find out exactly what Jesus did for her. Did you come here? You have a problem? Okay, this is the last person I'll pray for privately. I'm going to pray for all of you right now, one time. Take a seat. What's your name, dear brother? Manny. Uh, Manny Velasquez. What happened to you, Manny? Uh, years ago, I was uh, in a car accident, and then later on, when I, when I was working, I injured my back uh, on top of that, and I've had therapy, surgery over the years. It's always been like temporary relief, but I've, I've been dealing with back problems. you got pain uh, most, right now? Most of my life, yeah. How much pain? One to ten? Uh, right now, uh, it's probably about a seven, but, you know, there's times where it's ten, and like, I have a lot of weakness in my legs, and, and when I walk, uh, I got a lot of pain in my hip. Okay. All right, now watch this. I'm not going to touch him. Jesus is going to do it all, okay? When you say, thank you, Jesus, you'll feel a warm power go right up your back into your legs and heal you. That's Jesus. All right, you ready for that? Yes. All right, say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Put your hands up. There it comes. Power is coming right now. There it is, getting hot. The power is flowing. Because Jesus healed everybody, you see, many, everybody. On the cross, and you're taking your gift. That's why you said thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You say thank you, accept the gift. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. The power is flowing. By authority, I thank you, Jesus, for my healing. The power is flowing around, right, many is. Power's God's flowing in your yeah. back right now. There's that heat. There's yeah. that heat. It's yeah. hot, hot, flying through you. Yeah. Feel that heat? Yeah, I feel it in the back, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now just relax. He's doing surgery right now. Just relax. Enjoy it. See, when Jesus does surgery, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. You don't need any morphine, nothing. Yeah. He's just doing it. I brought my pain pill and I kept it in my pocket because I knew the Lord He's was going to help me. He's healing your hips right now, too. Huh? It's all done. Yeah. He knows exactly yeah. what to do and yeah. where you need it, right? Yeah. He does. Manny? Yes. It's all done. Yes. You are healed. Yeah. Put your hands up and thank him. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, my well, Lord Manny, and I want you to get up and walk fast over there. Walk free. Come back here, move around, do what you couldn't do before. Move around, swim, you know, do some cartwheels. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I've been wanting to golf, but I haven't golfed in two years. You, because golf? Of, uh, you can go golf again. Move around. Thank you, Jesus. Do that, Manny, do that. Do this, Manny. Okay. Now, Manny. Tell us what Jesus did for you. Jesus healed me. He healed me in full restitution. Healed my back, all my pain. Praise Thank you, Lord God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can come and stand down here, all of you. Come and stand down here.
Now, you see, I didn't touch that man. All of you that need healing tonight, stand up quickly. I'm going to pray one prayer. All of you, come stand down here. All of you that need healing, just stay where you are. Stay on your feet right now. Now, I'm going to pray. I don't have to touch you. You saw that. Jesus is going to touch you right now. Pray one prayer, and you will all be healed. You ready? You will all be healed. You don't have to come down here. You can stand at the back of the church. Jesus is everywhere. God is everywhere. There's no place in the universe that God is not there right now. So you don't have to come down here. I don't know why folks are coming. I'm not going to pray for anybody privately. I'm praying one prayer <laughs> for everybody at the same time. All right? <laughs> so you don't have to come down there. You can stay right there where you were. Okay. So Jesus knows. Look at me, everybody. Look at me. Jesus knows exactly what it is that you need. Correct? And he's everywhere. God is everywhere. The furthest star, God is there. So God is at the back of the church, right? And I didn't touch some of these people, right? God just healed them, right? So I don't have to touch anybody because it's not me anyway. It's the Holy Spirit. It's Jesus. All right. So they remember the key, the key, the switch, the switch that throws the power. The key, the switch that throws the power is thank you. Because if I was going to give you a gift for Christmas, can I borrow your hat for a second? Your hat. Can I borrow that for a second? Okay. So what's your name, son? Isaiah. What's your name? Isaiah. Isaiah. That's a good name. Right. Now, just to say, Isaiah, I have a hat for you for Christmas. And I'll come and give it to you. Right? What do you say? Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Now, he said thank you. Now, Isaiah, did you ask me? How much you had to pay for the hat? No. no. Did you ask me if you deserve the hat? No. Why? It's a gift. Christmas gift. You've got to receive this as a gift. If you try and earn this or deserve it, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. Why try and work for something that's already been given to you 2,000 years ago? You're not going to get it. You've got to let God do it. It's all grace. You understand that? Okay. Don't feel like I'm not worthy. Don't try and feel, oh, do I have to do something good to get it? You won't get it if you try that. That's the biggest problem, folks. Stop people from getting healed. All right, now, close your eyes. Everybody, close your eyes. Put your hands in the air. Say, Lord Jesus. Again, Lord Jesus, you are the healer. You bought healing for me on the cross. And tonight, I receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Like that woman, like that woman in Mark 5, who said, if I can touch his garment, I shall be healed. I declare now, tonight, he is here. And I shall receive what I came for. I receive my healing right now. Thank you, Jesus. All right, keep your eyes closed. Here comes the power. Here comes the power. Power is flowing through this whole building. Jesus' power is flowing through this building, touching people everywhere. Touching people everywhere. People are being healed everywhere right now. Arthritis is going. Asthma is going. Cancer is going. Cancer, cancer is going. God, dead in the name of Jesus. Epilepsy, go in the name of Jesus. Demons, come out in the name of Jesus and leave this building. Ulcer, ulcers, go. Brain disease and hemorrhage, go. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Migraine headaches, go right now, in the name of Jesus. High blood pressure, hearts healed. Arthritis, 
Arteries are opening. Arteries are opening. Arteries are opening. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Locked arteries are opening right now. Thyroid being healed right now. Pain is leaving right now. All pain. There it goes. In the name of Jesus. All pain gone right now. All right. Examine yourself. Do what you couldn't do before. Push real hard where the pain was. Real hard where the pain was. Quickly. Examine yourself. Bend down. Do some cartwheels. Whatever it is you couldn't do, do it now. Do it. Do it quickly. Test yourself out. Be vigorous. Aggressive. Aggressive. Test yourself out. God has healed you. Somebody with a deaf ear, God's opened that ear right now. Ear open in the name of Jesus. There it is. Where are those people that had one deaf ear? Put up your hand. One deaf ear. Put up your hand. Put your finger in the other ear. Listen to me out of the deaf ear. If you can hear me out of the deaf ear, wave your hand. If you can hear me out of the deaf ear, wave your hand. You can hear me? Out of the deaf ear? Yes. Who can hear me out of the deaf ear? God just opened ears. Check it out. Check it out. Wave at me. God opened your deaf ear. Thank you. Somebody else? Thank you. All right. Test yourself out. If God healed you tonight and you got it, put both your hands up in there and wave it. Give Jesus a wave offering. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just stay where you are. Don't move. Don't move. Bow your head. Close your eyes. You can go to heaven with a sick body, but you can't go to heaven with a sick soul. If you're here tonight and you don't know where you're going when you die, Tonight, you're going to be sure. You're going to be sure. Tonight, you're going home with the assurance that you will go to heaven one day. I'm going to pray a little prayer in a moment, and God's going to speak to your heart and let you know that you will go to heaven and not to hell. God's going to speak to your heart and tell you that you are His child that he has forgiven you for your sins. If you want God to speak to you tonight and tell you that, then ask him to talk to you by simply putting your hand up in the air like this. And I will pray that prayer. If you want God to confirm to you that you are God's child. Now, with your hand up in the air, I want you to come to me and stand right here. With your hand in the air, don't take it down. Come forward and stand right here. Bring your hand up in the air. You want to be sure you're going to heaven one day, and God must speak to you tonight and tell you. Come down here. I'm going to pray a prayer for you. Come down here. I'm going to pray a prayer for you. Come down here. I'm going to pray a prayer for you. God's going to speak to you and tell you that you will go to heaven one day. Come and stand in the front. Make room for everybody here. All the way around. All the way around. All the way around. All the way around. Do want God to speak to you? Come around down here. Come down. That's wonderful. Keep coming. That's wonderful. Keep coming. Give a big hand as they come, family. There's lots of room over here. Lots of room right here. Thank you. Keep coming. I want to be sure I'm going to heaven tonight. I want God to speak to me and tell me in my heart, I'm going to heaven one day, okay? You don't want to be uncertain about that. You don't want to wake up in the fires of hell. You want to be 
when you die, you want to make sure you go to heaven. That's so important. The most important decision. Come closer to the platform. There's a lot of people trying to get in still. Closer to the platform. Make room for others. Help them, ushers, please. Move around this way, ushers. Move them around, please. I don't want to lose anybody. Jesus don't want anybody to miss out. Jesus don't want to. This is not for healing, right? This is for to be sure about heaven. This is what this is about, right? Come on now. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. All right. They're still coming. All the way back there. Still coming. Make room on the sides. Ashes, make room on the sides, please. This is so wonderful. So wonderful. Jesus loves you so much. Jesus loves you so much. Jesus loves you so much. Did you know God punished Jesus on the cross? The Bible says in Isaiah 53, he was smitten and afflicted by God. God punished Jesus on the cross. He did to Jesus much more than the Roman soldiers did to him. God punished Jesus for your sins. That's how much God loved you. He couldn't bear to look at his son dying on the cross. He punished him. You say, why did God do that? The pain of that, the pain in God's heart when he punished his son like that was nothing in comparison to the pain he'd have in his heart for all eternity if you were all in hell. So he couldn't take that. The Bible said, for his sake he forgave us of our sins because the pain he'd suffer for all eternity without us would be more than the cross. So he let Jesus die on the cross. That was less painful to God, as painful as that was. That's how much God loves you right here, now. You understand that? All right. Now say this prayer with me, all of you in the front. Say this prayer with me. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to die on that cross in my place. You punished Jesus in my place. He took my punishment so I could be forgiven. Lord Jesus, I'm so grateful. You suffered so much for all my sins. I'm sorry for all my sins. It was my sins that put you on the cross. I'm sorry, Jesus. Please forgive me tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Save me right now. Thank you, Jesus. And I declare, Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. From this moment, I will live for you with all of my heart. I give my heart to you, Jesus, completely to follow you, to serve you, to obey you, to read your Bible, and to go to church. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Jesus, for accepting me now to be God's child. And today, I am now born into God's family. I'm now God's child. That means I'm born again. I was born, I was born in an earthly family, but today I'm born again into God's family. Praise God. I'm God's child. I'm God's child. I am God's child. And I have eternal home. I have an eternal home with God and Jesus and all my brothers and sisters in heaven forever. Praise God. I will continue to serve Jesus, to live for Jesus, talk about Jesus, and join a good church. Amen. Now look at me. Now look at me. Just look at me. This church, 
No, no, I'm telling you something. <laughs> this church, is, no, no, I'm telling you something. <laughs> Just listen, right? I'm saying one more time now, this church is a phenomenal church. Now, 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 now listen carefully now. You need a good family church to belong to because they want to love you, take care of you, encourage you in your new journey with Jesus and teach you all the wonderful things that God has for you in your future. God has a great plan for your life, an exciting future for you, a blessed future. God wants to take care of your health, your prosperity, your family, he wants to make sure you get the right husband, the right wife, and he wants to fix your family, bring love into your home. There's so many good things God has planned for you. And this church will walk you into that wonderful life. Right here. If I was living in this city, I would come sit listen to Pastor Marco every Sunday. I encourage you to do that too. All right? God bless you. Amen. Church, wasn't that awesome? We got to witness miracles tonight. But how awesome is it that we received an impartation of healing so that we can see God move in our families and in our homes in Jesus' name. Church, don't forget, we got night one last night. We got night two tonight. There's two more services. Get the full impartation of what God has for you. Tomorrow night, Pastor Obed is going to be here. And Jonathan Trailer, worship leader, worship recording artist, he sings a song, Lifted. We're actually going to sing that right now in just a second. But don't miss all that God has for you. Tomorrow night, come early. There was a line out there since like 2 or 3 o'clock. So come early, get a good seat. We'll see you tomorrow night. We love you, church. Also, Pastor Theo has books out in the foyer. Let's buy some of those books. If you didn't catch one, if you don't got hands like that and didn't catch one, you could buy one out there. We got plenty more. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Come early to get a good seat. We're going to sing a song by, pa uh, by Jonathan Trailer. He's going to be with us tomorrow night.